Wireless Mike, I read an article today about Crow's Nazi memorabilia collection. Of course. And what he calls his Garden of Evil. Super weird guy. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. I want to take you back. Talking about my brother Bernie. Bernie was born in 1949. Here's an image right before the Moyles said, Ryan, get the hedge clippers. That's the whole joke. <laughs> and I don't remember how he fits into this Clarence Thomas story, but I really want to talk about this Clarence Thomas story and just bitch about it. So let's go. I'm David Feldman, and this is the mop up for April 8th, 2023. Judge Clarence Thomas is an old, dear, dear friend of mine, and he's very upset tonight about this article that's in ProPublica. So, as a personal hospitality to my friend Clarence Thomas, I offered him some time on my show, because that's... Damn it. It was a David Feldman joke. It wasn't a Bernie Sanders joke. They're just both Jewish, and I'm a little bit, just a little bit... Bigoted, I'm fighting out. Working on that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, all right. So there's a young David Feldman. Ryan, get the hedge clippers. All right. Now we know where the joke was supposed to go. What dear, dear friends do as a personal hospitality. And I began to talk to him, and he is spitting angry about this article in ProPublica. And I said, Clarence, Clarence, I am your friend. And as a personal hospitality... I don't believe you should come on the show to set the record straight. Instead, write something out. And as a personal hospitality, because that's what dear, dear friends do, I will read your statement on the show because I have a feeling that you'll go off script and say things that you'll regret. So as a personal hospitality... Speaking of... Uh, jokes, gags, and general tomfoolery. Uh, I'm going to tell the Wicked Senate, but I'm probably not going to bring this up uh, too often after because I will forget. I'm going to steal this whole bit. I love the idea of reading a quote from a public figure as if they wrote you personally upon your advice. That's genius. I'm going to steal that. Now you know. At least I'm crediting the theft. To my dear, dear friends, Clarence and Ginny Thomas, I would now like to read a, a message, a statement from Judge Clarence Thomas in response to this article that is in ProPublica. So this is a statement from Judge Clarence Thomas. It reads, Harlan Crow has been one of my dearest friends for as long as I can remember. Those who think Harlan only likes me because of the legal favors I could perform simply don't know Harlan Crow. Up until recently, Harlan didn't even know what I did for a living. He thought Supreme Court Justice was my first name and Clarence Thomas was my last. Harlan likes me and I like him. That's all there is to it. He's ah. the yin to my yang. We both enjoy mm. expensive gifts. I receiving them, he giving them. And they weren't even gifts. I, Clarence Thomas, would never accept a gift. These were personal hospitalities. Okay, so I don't think it is a, uh, it's a, or it doesn't sound like it's an actual quote. Still, I love this bit, and I'm, I'm going to steal the bit that I thought it was, for sure. Am I supposed to disclose every personal hospitality extended to me by a friend? My neighbor, Larry, gave me his old chainsaw last year. Should I disclose that? The waitress at the Olive Garden didn't charge us for a refill on my soda. Should I disclose that? Harlan Crow flies me on his private jet to an all-expense-paid vacation at his resort in the Adirondacks, where he gets me talking about the inner workings of the court so he can invest accordingly. I'm supposed to disclose that, too? Yeah. Where yeah, does it all end? I'd say that one's probably good. Look, I'm a public servant, and as a public servant, I totally get it. I get it. Uh. That, that sacrifices must be made for the privilege 
of sitting on the highest court, which is why when I took this job, I gave up repeatedly asking <laughs> female underlings out on dates, no matter oh, no. how often they insisted it made them uncomfortable. I also agreed to stop following female coworkers into the ladies' room without consent to show off my photographic memory by describing in precise detail the Brazilian nun porn I watched the night before. I even <laughs> dialed back my witticisms, foregoing my Noel Coward-like bon mots, like asking attractive female co-workers if that was a pubic hair on their Diet Coke. I gave all that up for the court. But I never agreed, nor would I, to becoming a casualty in the radical left's war on Christmas by refusing gifts. I'm sorry, did I say gifts? I meant personal hospitalities. I would never accept a gift. That would be wrong. Did I accept $500,000 in free travel each year from Harlan? Yes. And I will do so again this year because Harlan is a Christian and I have no right to interfere with any man's religious freedom to be generous. Hey, if I knew these trips were valued at $500,000 each, I'd go on the prices right. I just accepted them. It never occurred to me to say, this is a fantastic private resort, Harlan, and your free meals are incredible. What would it run us if Ginny and I decide to stop being your friend and instead go out of pocket? You don't ask how much a personal hospitality is worth. Read the Bible, specifically the hospitalities of the Magi. The baby Jesus. This is great, and I'm going to keep it going. Uh, who, who was it that reminded me that A, David Feldman exists, and B, we should be playing him on this channel because I got to thank you again. I've been enjoying like a renaissance of David Feldman. Uh, but I do just, I just, I want to jump in there. That does touch on something rather serious, which is even if you don't know the specific price of something, when you fly internationally, you have, it has to, it just has to worm into your brain somewhere that this is a big expense, that this thing has a lot of value. And it really, it's salty Saturday, baby. I still got to be salty. It, it cheeses me off. Something awful. Uh, that that anybody's pretending on the right, uh, on the more uh, let's not rock the boat left, anybody at all is pretending that this isn't wildly corrupt and requiring immediate remedy. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is to be commended for saying to impeach the mother. Actually, we've literally had people say that phrase before, and it was in reference to Trump. But she, did, she said to impeach Clarence Thomas, and she's right. And by the way, it doesn't matter. It does not matter that there's not enough votes in the House to yada, yada, yada. It should be brought up so that the people who will protect him have to endure the shame of his next scandal, the next thing that's inevitably going to come out. One thing about journalism, the reason you, stand, you tend to start to hear drips and drabs and then a flood of information about somebody is because journalists often are, are great at finding information, but they need to know what they're trying to find information about. Now people know Clarence Thomas blatantly accepts bribes. So now there's going to be tons of journalists like, oh, I want a great. Let's look for some corruption. And they're going to find it. Because this cat has been accepting bribes for so long. For so long. And they're going to start doing stories where they're linking certain of his opinions to when he took bribes. So make this a Republican problem by making them not impeach Clarence Thomas. That's all I'm saying. All right, back to Feldman being Feldman. Get him, baby.
and the hospitalities of the Magi, the baby Jesus accepted the gold, frankincense, and myrrh from the three wise men, but never once said, can you ballpark what all this would go for on the open market, you know, in the name of full transparency? Didn't happen. Never said it. And let's clear something up immediately. Harlan isn't giving me hospitalities because I sit on the Supreme Court. I know this guy. He'd hospitality me if I were an appellate court judge or even a municipal judge. Harlan likes judges. Some billionaires who own luxury resorts invite artists, musicians, or chefs to come visit. Harlan prefers offering judicial residencies. At his resort, his guests are encouraged to learn the joy of judging by watching me judge things like how fresh the salmon at lunch was or how cinematic that last sunset turned out to be. Because I get paid to judge, I'm always amazed at how little your run-of-the-mill weekend judge, with no hopes of ever going pro, actually knows about judging, especially when it comes to judging the difference between a French Merlot and one from the Napa Valley. I wish more people could spend time with me at these resorts just watching me judge things. They would gain a keener appreciation of how hard it is to sit on the Supreme Court. Harlan and I get along so well because we're not jealous of each other's immense talent. He's not envious of my great judging skills, and I'm not envious of his innate gift to find just the right personal hospitality to keep me coming back to his resorts. Now, some accuse me of liking Harlan simply because he's wealthy. Honestly, up until this story broke in ProPublica, I had no idea that Harlan was a billionaire. I swear, I never think about what people are worth. I figured he was a multimillionaire. Turns out he's a billionaire. Doesn't matter to me. And by the way, the hospitality giving was a two-way street. Yes, his personal hospitalities given to me were in the neighborhood of $500,000 each. But my personal hospitalities given to him were the act of showing gratitude for his personal hospitalities to me that were in the neighborhood of $500,000 each. That's what dear, dear friends do. They exchange personal hospitalities. For example, I remember waking up Christmas morning last year on his super yacht, anchored off an Indonesian archipelago. Sitting on my nightstand, I noticed a gift-wrapped mid-condition Patek Philippe watch cast in rose gold. It was a personal hospitality from Harlan Crow. Knowing that this watch was only one of two in existence, I wanted to give Harlan a personal hospitality of equal value. I thought long and hard, how do I reciprocate? And then it hit me. I would wear the new watch at dinner. I wish I could wear the look on his face that night around my wrist, but I guess I'll just have to settle with the $700,000 Patek Philippe watch instead. I'm David Feldman, and in just a few minutes, we're going to be doing office hours. Please join me. Uh, tonight's office hours, if you're watching this live on YouTube, tonight's office we're not, but David Feldman, wonderful, wonderful. That is a bit I'm going to be stealing. Maybe a little more abridged, but in a bit, uh, that's a bit I'm going to be stealing. Too good. Well done. Let's talk about this a little bit. All right, what does the Wicked community have to say about... Uh, about uh, 
this this cat's corruption. I read an article today about ooh, oh my god, uh, wireless mic. I read an article today about Crow's Nazi memorabilia collection, of course, and what he calls his Garden of Evil. Super weird guy. Yes. Yep. 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 <laughs> Am I supposed to obey every streetlight I drive through? Mars Falcon says in quotes. Yeah. Absolutely astounding. Uh, Mar- Mars Falcon, Mr. Thomas has sacrificed so much for us. All of us. Yeah. Oh, God. Wicked Foxy Dragon says, You may not ask, but you damn sure know it is worth your time, or really worth your time. Yeah. Uh, Mars Falcon, if a DA cannot be immune to influence for campaign contributions, which he never even got, then how is winning, uh, how is whining and dining a justice while your buddies plop case after case in front of him? Uh, copacetic. Yeah, it's not. Um, <clears throat> Mars Falcon, maintain that amateur status and let the cash flow from the alumni boosters. That way, you need to report none of it. Christ. I mean... Wicked Foxy Dragon puts it best, I think, so we can all agree that hospitality means gift. Yep. There it is. That is it in a nutshell. Good God almighty. All right, what what other schwanz jokes did we have that we got to get rid of? I mean, mostly it was that one rant, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad we got to open the show with that. Uh, oh yeah, here here's a mildly uh, uh, racially charged one, but uh, I hadn't even figured out where to put it in. I just wanted to um, do it, so we're gonna do it. Uh, look, I I realize I I say a lot of um, peculiar phrases. It's just I like to represent all all sorts of folks. And I like to provide some representation. I'm I myself am not Jewish, but I like. You know, the word schwanz, I think, is very funny. I, I do references to Jewish culture. But the truth is, I'm, I'm uh, representing cultures from all over on this show in all sorts of ways, all sorts of times. I might wear a dress one day. And in fact, I'm, I'm representing uh, black culture in, in a certain way. Uh, you just can't see below the, the desk line. But I'm wearing Air Jordans. So <clears throat> trying to represent uh, everybody. 